Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War World Lore Event Week uh, 1, Day 6. So today, we're actually at Stage 11 on both of them. Uh, so of course we have invasions this weekend, as well as Council of Chiefs, and invasions within a single day has, uh, or you know, 24 hours, has already caught up with um, Councils of Chiefs. So we were able to get Stage 11 Councils of Chiefs. This is pretty noteworthy in that this actually allows us to use a whole additional um, metal if we so choose, which I think we're going to so choose. So uh, basically what we can do now is if you bought tier 6 from the uh, shop and you got at least tier or stage 11 in your guild, you would have uh, exactly enough sigils or not sigils, exactly enough um, tokens to have three medals of seasons. Uh, as of Monday. So once Monday comes around, if you would have done that, you will have uh, three medals a season. So if you were trying to get that, you would uh, be at that at that point. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, what we'll have going forward. And that also means we also technically have three medals when we're going to do this event. As you can see, as we grab these two orbs and get completely uselessness from it, uh, we can now see we get a uh, badge or a medal. I mean, uh, well, technically both. And uh, with that, we can now go and set this to uh, three bonuses. So instead of 20% start, boom. And now, of course, these three medals that we now have that are giving us 160% scroll damage this week will transfer over next week into medals of seasons, which will be uh, give for uh, life uh, attack and armor to all allies, which obviously makes Arachnia pretty useless, but uh, still one of the better tokens in the entire game. Uh, I mean, one of the better medals in the entire game. Really, really potent. And um, yeah, even if you don't get three, obviously you can run 20% with two and uh, other various combinations. But uh, we'll be interesting to see how it ends up panning out. Uh, into the future as far as what kind of teams will utilize it. Obviously, Ketris will be good with it. But quite a few Guild War teams will probably use it too just because it covers a wide range. And when you don't know what the enemy is going to be going, it's probably one of your better options to be utilizing in uh, a lot of those situations. It's not going to be the absolute best for a lot of things just because uh, normally all in onto magic or some extra mana star or um, some other stat might be a little bit more useful for a really specific focus team. But uh, overall, really great metal. And uh, highly advise like, at least getting one if you can get enough through the event. But... Um, yeah, if you do stage, uh, or if you bought up to tier 6 with stage 11, you'll have three medals. Exactly, which is what we just hit right there. So, perfect. Anyways, other than that, Invasions has been doing Invasions. That's just it's a normal thing. Uh, obviously, we're at the exact same part, right at uh, stage 11, trying to get that stage 12. In this case, we should easily be able to get the stage... Oh, gosh, can we get any good orbs? <laughs> Awful luck. Just all greens and oranges. But, um, yeah, this is probably going to be completed by um, tomorrow. should be. I sure hope so. But I don't feel like the other event will be. The uh, Councils of Chiefs. They are looking to rescale this event, so do be wary of that. But uh, as it currently stands, it does not look like we'll be able to get that gap. However, let's start here. Uh, we're actually going to start here mostly because of... Um, I wanted to test the uh, three medals that we just have set. So if we go over here... Uh, which page does it show on? I believe it shows on here if we just wait a second. So here we'll see the medal bonus that we have. Uh, or does it not show? Never mind. Do I not have it set? I should have it set. Uh, I do have it set. I guess it doesn't show up on that screen. I always thought it did. My bad. Uh, but anyways. If we could, can you please stop trying to sell us things? Okay, let's go to uh, Councils of Chiefs and uh, kill this out. So, if we do this now, we'll now have... Uh, what is that? Uh, three 160%. That is... A... Math. <laughs> that is 480% damage. Uh, additional that we'll be able to get there. Pretty solid amount. Uh, of course, we will still need Earth's Fury before we can really get things rolling. But now everything will very easily be able to, regardless of how much it really upscales, be able to go and uh, one-shot everything uh, with every single one of our skull pokes that we have. And we can kind of just go from there. So no alignment there. Let's kind of take a blue over there. Try to get something rolling if we can. Uh, doesn't look like we have much, so let's move that together. And ideally have something to use, like that skull, which will obviously one-shot, as will every other skull we have. Uh, and with all the empowers, we barely even notice that we don't have the mana start there. Oh, grab that. Uh, nice little skull as follow-up as well. Get our free kill there. I don't have a drop there, so we might just throw another Earth Fury. Biggest issue here is Val Ravens looking intimidating. Uh, though, never mind. I'm not actually going to do that. Just to deny his yellow and also because we should have follow-up skull. So we'll do that. He might get a poke on us, but we could hopefully poke him back. Will he give a setup for it? Uh, no, but uh, we did still a barrier there. So we can just dodge that up. Actually, did we get actually trigger dodger? We are using Monk. That might have been a 20% dodge. But uh, all we need now is this one single skull. Unfortunately, we do not have alignment for it, nor do we have a way to set up into double. Actually, I think I'm going to set up to double right here. So basically what's going to happen here is he'll have two skull choices. He can't take both. We lose our hero. But of course, this game mode doesn't actually matter if you lose your troops as long as you still win. So we can just do that to basically bait it out and get the uh, easy kill. Over to the mythic battle. 
And also, since we got Vow Ravens, we probably have about seven or nine more battles then to go. Uh, do you believe uh, them making the events easier? Oh, yeah, this event will definitely be easier into the future. It'll also be scaled into a different way into future events. That isn't exactly how it is right now. Because the scoring of the event will always be different. Well, maybe not always completely drastically different, but um, the theme of the event can be changed to quite a few different things compared to how most events are set up. Um, so the range of which the point system might be set up to is going to be vastly different. And it's one of the biggest reasons why this one is probably currently so um, out of balance is mostly because they are planning on doing almost a new scoring system every single month, essentially, with this game mode. At least until they figure like something kind of out with it. Because um, the actual objective for the game mode, unlike other game modes, would change over time. It won't be the exact same objective. Like, you will not be killing things for these random skulls uh, next time around. It'll be a completely different objective compared to what it is now. And, of course, it'll have a completely different scoring for that completely different objective. So, hopefully, it'll figure out some kind of balance for it. Because this one definitely wasn't the most of balanced. But, um, let's we'll kind of have to wait and see. And also, this specific event was not in the beta, by the way. The one that is currently running right now. I know some people mentioned why didn't the people in the beta mention anything. But that's mostly because this event was not the one running. Uh, let's see. I'll go throw that down. I didn't say hello to everyone. How could I not? But yeah, I hope all of you have been having a wonderful weekend so far. Hope you all have been staying safe out there. Uh, but hello, Army X Tube. Hello, Stiplemen. Hello, Jefferson. Hello, Bill. Uh, Bill. Uh, hello, Isabel. Hello, Foro. Hello, uh, Army. Uh, I already said Army X Tube. Hello, Andrew. Hello. D -d -d hello, Jellybean. Hello, John. Hello, Captain again. Hello, uh, Oomfufu. Hello. D -d 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 hello, Curtis. And hello, everyone else. Welcome, welcome. A Nintendo Switch is finally getting version 4.0 on Monday. Nice. I did not know that. Very nice. I wonder how early they will be uh, do uh, medals since it will be a raid event. Um, I believe if you check terrensworld.com it might have info on that. Um, we can go check that real quick for anyone who is playing on Switch. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Terrensworld.com Gems of War. Okay, where's the switch of this? Uh, where's the switch event? So weekly event spoilers for Switch. So if I go over here, the first one. Gosh, what would it be called though? Under these, class, faction, tower, pet. Uh, I don't see one. Guild Wars, faction, faction, class, bounty, invasion, faction, pet rescue, class, vaults. I don't even see one within these things. Unless it's marked a bit differently and they just forgot to mark it wrong in this column. Is it marked correctly in the PC Mobile column? I would assume so. Uh, yeah, it's called World Event. Ha! People did take that name as well. So people are calling it World Event. I'm not sure if I had any contribution to that. <laughs> but some amount of people are calling it World Event. Because that was the main thing I was calling it. So yeah, cool, it is called World Event. But yeah, I don't see it for Switch. Unless they forgot to update it or something. But I didn't see it on the Switch side there. Though that could change as it gets the update. So maybe we won't know exactly when it is until the update actually launches. Because the game files for the game might not have been updated yet. Which is likely. That it hasn't yet. Because they never get updates. <laughs> the Switch version is always so far behind. Uh, what do we need here? Let's grab a Fury. We'll let him poke us. We already start with Barrier, so it's fine. And now with our basically five times skull damage, we should easily be able to take everything out with the single Earth Fury. That in combination should be enough to kill. Why don't you guys take this and try for Sky Skull? Oh, that works too. That was actually Invisible Sight too. I did not notice that. <laughs> That's a nice cascade. That's like an AI kind of cascade. But I'll take that. But that was all Invisible Sight. Nice. Though I did not see it. Uh, I'll grab a brown there. Uh, what do we even need for alignment here? Just need a random skull to get next to these yellows. Not quite. Uh, I'm actually going to just pass my turn with Earth Fury. To hopefully bait him into giving us something. Which does not happen. Uh, we'll take that for now. That also does not help us. Can I drop that? No, I cannot. But what I can do is move it together some. So we did that to try for four skull chances. We missed all four. Wow. But um, here we win. 
Because he'll take two skulls. However, there'll still be one skull left that he can't take. <gasps> oh, no. I thought there was still one there. Never mind. No. That's not good. I thought there was still a skull follow-up. My bad. Uh, okay, we'll take that for now. He'll do a thing. Then he dies. Nothing else. At least I'll populate the board with some skulls to kill him. And we'd even lose our hero. Not like it would matter if we did, as long as we don't lose the battle. And it should be a Valraven battle. This one or next one? Okay, apparently next one. Okay, what do we need? Uh, let's grab... Not that yellow. Uh, let's grab... Nothing looks good, actually. Take that for now. Take the skull that's just sitting there. I still need to go get a uh, Fury cast off. Haven't gotten that yet. We'll try for brown off the sky. Didn't get it. And then he denied my right immediately. A little bit slow on the mana start. We'll try for brown off the sky. Again, didn't get it, but luckily got it over there, so that works. Now we can go through Earth's Fury and get rolling. Now we have enough attack to one-shot everything. We'll start with a poke. He'll poke us back. Unfortunately, we do not have follow-up. We'll just take a barrier. I'll try for Sky Skull. Didn't get it. But we do have uh, follow-up there if we want. However, we might as well just grab that instead. He'll take a skull back. And what do we need here? Do we even have alignment? Mm, no. Not worth going for. So let's take a brown for now to regain barrier just in case. You never know. Uh, that's alignment and he's dead. That is match. What event was in the beta? Uh, the Adana one. Which I'm not sure if we're even getting that Adana one. Because I believe the next one after this one's a Dragon Soul one. Uh, what do we do here? We'll take that for now. Grab all that mess. Take the other thing over there. We do have alignment on that. I guess we go for it just because it's attack gain. However, I can't go for it again just because it's not enough damage. So we'll take that. Now we have enough damage, but we don't have any skulls. Go figure. Okay, uh, I guess we'll just take a red into Sky Skull. And we got it. Nice. I think that's the first Sky Skull we got all stream. Very unlucky with them so far. But of course, you gotta go for the chance. They don't always hit, but when they do hit, it's pretty devastating. And nice to have. So let's take that for now. Oh, I thought that was extra turn. Oh, my bad. Apparently not. Uh, I'll take that for now. I can take one single skull if I want. Actually, now it's two single skulls. That doesn't help us since it's just one and one. Actually, I should have just taken that skull and then follow it up. Why did I do that? Because I just wasted all that damage potential. It's not that big a deal, though. Once skull kills, just need to find a way to get it. We'll try for it off the sky. Didn't get it, but we have alignment right there, so he's dead. Easy as that. Oh, I thought it was a dragon one. Maybe it's changed. I haven't double-checked it in the last few days. Mostly because Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah, I haven't checked it for a little while. Uh, let's see. We'll take that for now. Uh, let's see. What do we even want here? Grab that for now. Let him do his thing. Grab a Earth's Fury down. Uh, I'll take that over. Uh, what else do we need? Take that over. Grab a uh, Sky Skull, ideally. Nope, didn't get it. Get our skull over there. What else do we need? Grab a... Uh... Hmm. Take that. And he's dead. Yeah, this event actually was different um, prior to it getting released. You could even see it when, um, not even during uh, beta, but during um, when she streamed it, um, Salty. There were both bones and uh, skulls in the event. And then they end up changing it to just skulls at last minute. But yes, this event was originally supposed to have bones in it. But then they kind of changed it. And in doing the change, they must have increased the, uh, increased the, uh, the amount that you need to complete it. By too much 
relative to how many skulls they end up doing. But yeah, this event was originally planned to be both um, skulls for 10 points and bones for 1 point. Where you would get uh, some amount of skulls and some amount of bones. But yes, that was changed last minute for whatever reason. For I have no clue why. Uh, but anyways, uh, with that done, uh, we still don't have our other reward. But uh, we'll go do our invasion battles just to kill those out as well. To help out our guild get to that objective. We'll probably get about a one Vow Raven. And hopefully have it by tomorrow night so we can just claim right into it. But uh, yeah, let's go get this done. Also, who's slacking in this guild? We have ourselves some zero. We got a zero. Also, we still are looking for a member, by the way. We originally had one, but they ended up... Um... Actually, I'm not sure what ended up happening with that, actually. <laughs> but uh, regardless, we still need um, to put a spot there. So if anyone's interested, do let me know. Anyways, uh, what was I doing? I need to go get... Um... What's that do we even need for this? I guess attack, technically. So I guess we'll do something weird and go right into this attack one. Since we don't have seasons yet until uh, Monday. But uh, we'll go with this and just kill these out real quick with invasions. And I don't think we need to change anything else. Yep, it should be good to go. And now they're all towers, so we should be able to easily clean them up. And basically just go right into our scroll spam. Do it very similar to how we did the other battles. Except now we have even more mana accumulation. And a way to cast kill, which also works quite well. Uh, so we don't have to necessarily de uh, depend on skulls. We can simply just do that and boom, dead. I technically didn't need Arif's Fury. <laughs> a little overkill already. And that kills out that. And a single skull kills it out. Unfortunately, no alignment. So we'll just try for Sky. Didn't get it, nor did we get a yellow there. Uh, I might just do this. Oh, never mind. We have alignment right over there. Boom, we did. We won. Easy as that. How is the scoring for the Adon event? I actually completely forget at this current moment in time. I know it was different. I just forget exactly what it was. Oh, what do I grab here? Take that down over there. Hopefully we have alignment here, which we do not. Nor do we have a bait skull. To do skull to skull. So we'll just do that. So we can just kill him with his ability. And he's dead. Or skull. That works too. Here I have a skull. We don't have agility. It's not like he's going to dodge the skull. And some of them do have 75% uh, skull reduction. Specifically the Bastion Tower. However, that was not a Bastion Tower. Yep, and nor is that a Bastion Tower. It is now a Valor Raven Tower. <laughs> go figure. Uh, okay, let's go actually kill it immediately. Just to get rid of it. Because Valor Raven... Uh, that won't take red. Ideally, we'll have alignment here. Doesn't look like we have it, though. So let's go for brown to go redo his ability. Uh, we'll take that over. Get a free skull. Perfect. Uh, we don't have anything else to take there. So we'll go throw this down onto something. Grab that down. Um, uh, take the other skull, and we're good to go. Wish you can go through events that easily. Well, it depends on what options you have. I guess it could also depend on your base stats, too. In some game modes. Like, invasions for these earlier battles, like where we're on right now, is relatively easy this late in the game. Just because your amount of stats relative to what they have is relatively high. Actually, our base stats are still higher than them, pretty much. Though we're not super deep in uh, the game mode right now, though. In uh, invasions. Right now, I'm where you'd be if you bought tier 3. Another Vow Raven Tower. Didn't we just get one? Nice. Oh no, all of our good alignment on the yellow just got destroyed. Quite unfortunate, but we'll go do the same thing. Kill that immediately. Take Skull. He'll take Skull. Ideally, we could take another Skull to follow up. Unfortunately, none there. Uh, we'll try for Sky Skull, I guess. Go. Nope. Unfortunate. Uh, do we have skull convert? Uh, no. No. So let's take that. Now do we have skull convert? No. How about now? <laughs> nope. But at this point, we can almost just kill it naturally. Uh, now we'll go for it. Just hope something randomly cascades. And if it doesn't, we just kill it with this cast. Then he's dead. And dead. But yeah, seasons will be really nice in instances like that. So we can tank it out. An extra 12 durability. Or sorry, more than 12 durability. An extra 24 durability um, on top of the 12 extra attack. Pretty nice. Because you get 4 and 4. 
It's not all in one, but you um, still get the same amount of durability as if you set both of the tokens. So I'm killing that first because it's skull reduction. Uh, we have alignment, so we can just go for that into skull to skull. Uh, where's our second skull that we want? There's a couple different ways we could take it. I'm actually going to take it that way. And the main reason for that is we can actually align it right there. Unfortunately, that's not full mana for the other one. We can just grab it, and he gives us free alignment, and he's dead. Actually, why didn't I just get a skull? <laughs> I didn't realize that we... I thought we only had... Um, I thought we had two left, not one. Didn't even need that extra turn. Setting up for it and don't even need it. Oh, I tripped for Sky Skull. Didn't get it. Or just to be expected, you're going to get it... Or you're not going to get it way more often than you are when you're going for something that's pure luck like that. We'll kill the Easter Tower. I don't think I've seen the Easter Tower cast a single time. I guess it's summon a Dragon Egg if it does. I don't think I've ever gotten to see it in any Easter event. It actually summon a Dragon Egg. I think maybe once ever. But it's been like two or three events now. Or, you know, Easter events that Invasions has spin around. And I don't think I've ever seen that tower create a Dragon Egg. Even though it's obviously possible. Alright, we're using Barbarian class right now. And the reason we're using Barbarian Hero class is because we already have half mana start off of, um... Off of Groshnok, so we might as well use it for it. And because I don't have it leveled yet. However, things like Titan would probably be a little bit safer. However, doing Barbarian does give you more spawn on your um, Groshnok by one. Which helps a little bit. If you are going to be using his ability. It helps feed him to full mana with a higher chance of extra turning. Like this. And then we kill. That's what having an extra orc helps doing. Obviously, it's not a guarantee extra turn. But it helps to try to secure that extra turn. But uh, there we go. And that's that. Invasion complete. Next objective. Uh, we need to go clear out these ultra easy dailies today. Gosh, I don't even think I need to set into armor. They're so easy. We can do all these without setting to armor a single time. And I think we have enough damage to do it. Also, after we finish out um, Adventure Board and um, Dungeons, we'll hand out our redeem code. Can you compare your towers and invasions? You got 116 for doing what? Tier 3? I have, um... It should be the exact same. Assuming same tier. That doesn't change. But I am 116. If you bought tier 3 and missed zero Val Ravens and haven't lost a single time, you should be at exactly 116 at tower level 86. That assumes tier 3 with no losses and no Val Ravens lost. So it's basically a flawless tier 3. Would be 116 kills. <laughs> Tass is flying through the stream to get back to Animal Crossing. <laughs> That is somewhat true. <laughs> Not gonna lie. My amount of hype towards it is still ridiculously high. We'll still be doing the Monday video and all that though. And everything. And I have a few other things I need to go do on Monday. Because for the last few, few days I haven't really been doing a lot of other stuff other than Animal Crossing. <laughs> so I need to catch up on Monday on all that. It is very addictive. <laughs> but if anyone still has any questions do let me know we'll make sure to get around to them all oh you got uh four gem keys off a of gnome yeah it's one of his better drops um theoretically three event keys is a higher gem value of 42 gems whereas uh four gem keys is theoretically 36 gem value however i prefer um the four gem key drop the absolute most compared to anything and the main reason for that is it helps with mythics. Whenever we get a new mythic, like a Friday mythic, uh, which will be in two Fridays from now, uh, not next Friday, but the following Friday, we will be getting a new mythic. I forget if it's actually viable or not. We can go luck with perk low. I already have the page open. Well, not the exact page, but uh, let me see. Is the next mythic relevant at all? Uh, next mythic. Where is it? I believe this is it, right? Uh, no. This is it. 
So, next mythic, what does it do? It deals uh, magic plus three splash damage. Oh, I remember reading this. It's a little bit weird. Um, it deals magic plus three splash damage to one to four random enemies, then jumbles the board and gains an extra turn. If I'm not mistaken, um, this is the second mythic in the game to have guarantee extra turn. The first being Iron Gut. Um, and we saw how Iron Gut was. Pretty good. Actually, still one of the better mythics in the game. And as far as what it has for traits, it's uh, mostly 25% spell reduction. And a really interesting effect in that I get to enchant all allies on 4-5 matches. This is basically a free 8 mana to your entire turn. Uh, to your entire team per turn, uh, potentially. So it has a lot of potential. Uh, obviously, you need to be losing your turns in order for that to fully take effect. Um, however, it's it's still pretty decent, nonetheless. Um, there's such situations, situations where you would almost use her just for the sake that she has an extra turn into the fact that she enchants all allies. Um, so overall, I feel like it's, it is going to be useful. Um, I hate that it's so random. Like, its damage could be four times higher or just be, like, a base one times, which will be really low. Uh, at about two times, I believe it's slightly weaker than Infernus. However, if it hits three times or four times, it will be, um stronger than things like Infernus and such. So uh, has quite a bit of potential there. Counts as blue, yellow, brown, so you can use it for all those Guild War days. Uh, I feel like um, blue day would probably be the absolute best as far as gaining a benefit from this. However, all three of those could theoretically incorporate it in. It does count as an elemental Fey. So uh, the one of the reasons why blue is most relevant uh, and why I mentioned blue day is probably the day you'll use it is Mirage Queen. Uh, Mirage Queen gives all elementals a 50% mana start. And obviously you can 50% mana start this uh, mythic, which has an extra turn on it and a board jumble and an enchant to all allies for only 12 mana. So this is probably going to be a really good blue Guild War option. I'm not sure if I'll be using it for much outside of blue Guild War, but blue Guild War is pretty much going to be the definition of this troop. Uh, it might be used in some other situations, obviously, with like elemental Mirage Queen kind of teams. Uh, you know, like a team that's pure elemental into Mirage Queen. But uh, overall, its biggest purpose will 100% be um, for Blue Guild War. And that's one of the weaker days too, and that should help bu buff it up quite a bit. I mean, that's a really, really solid Blue Guild War option. And that's coming out uh, two Fridays from now, not next Friday, but the following Friday. Basically the first Friday of the month as every Mythic comes out. Same as always. Yeah, unlike normal, well, we've been getting some pretty bad things lately. Uh, that's actually pretty decent. Um, should, could she be comboed with Vespera? I almost feel like the answer to that is no. And the main reason I say that, well, I guess you could. Um, I don't know. You waste the enchant value by using it with Vespera. But because you have the auto extra turn, I guess it kind of would work. Um, most of the coloration is the same too. The only big difference being the brown color. Um, but yeah, I guess you could build it into Vespera as well. I'm not sure if I would use it for Guild War with Vespera though. But, um, you can use it with Vespera for sure. And the main reason I say that is I'm not sure if it's going to get started quick enough. Because two really big mana costs like that, unless you get like an extra turn very quickly. You're not going to have your enchant. You're not really going to have anything to go uh, when you're first starting out. So having a half mana star, I guess, brings it a little bit closer. I'm not sure. We can test it around and see. It's something we'll kind of have to experiment out around with to really see. But overall, it will definitely be above average mythic for sure. With its main focus being blue guild war. Uh, anyways, let's go hand out code. I did mention that we'd hand it out right then. So let's go do exactly that. I believe we're at the third code now. I should probably start marking them. Haven't been lately. But we'll put that down, put that down, boom, boom. Got it first try. I knew that was the one. Uh, copy, copy. Paste, paste. And here you guys go. Here's the redeem code. Use it on gemsofwar.com or the game code section. There you guys go. Your invite code can be found underneath your settings menu. Or whatever game says right over here is what you put in. Our redeem code's right over there in chat. The uh, A, S, Y, and all those random letters and numbers. And it gives the same reward as always. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Enjoy, everyone. Okay, next order business. We need to go get a monk level. Not sure how close we are to the next level, but we need to get at least one level on that thing. Because we need to get this maxed by next Guild War. And Guild War is increasingly creeping up on us. Uh, let's see, what are we at right now? 87? See, so yeah, we'll definitely make sure to get at least 88. So let it begin. Uh, let's see, let's do it in Zayjin. Let's go get 88 uh, monk. Make sure I'm set to armor so we don't fail any of these battles, which I don't believe I'm currently on. And we should be good to go. And also just so I don't forget because they look really similar. 
Let me change this for tomorrow. Because I know I'm going to click on that thinking that those are the um, the medals of uh, Chiefs. But I have them set as Arachnia. So let me make sure I put them to Chiefs right now just so I don't forget tomorrow. Knight. That would be a big fail. But anyways, let's go run through this. See how it goes. Oh. So we need, what, about 60 wins or so? I use Vespera occasionally. It's very situational. It is very, very situational, Vespera. She's also hard countered by Freeze. And it's a little bit of a waste to go out of your way for Cedric sometimes. You know, the Medal of Cedric, that is. Or I keep calling it Cedric. I mean, um, the Medal of Orpheus. I wish they never named it Cedric. I'm not sure why it wasn't Orpheus to begin with. But now I keep calling it Cedric because I'm just so used to calling it Cedric. Is Warbreaker any good? He's okay. Um... He's about average. The biggest issue he has is he's really bad against the merge. And he has the highest mana cost in the game at 30... Or sorry, second highest at 30. He used to be 32. And then they uh, lowered him to uh, 30, which was a buff. And tweaked how his ability worked a little. But yeah, he has a mass explosion. That's kind of like our Gorgotha. Into a full AoE. The only big issue with that, though, is uh, all these submerges exist. Particularly on Frost Mage and stuff. Which hard counter it very hard. Unlike Infernus and other Mythics that can kind of bypass it a bit. Or completely. Um, he cannot. Uh, he's probably most commonly used with Bronzak, Pistol, Cedric, Wordbreaker, and one other option. Or sorry, the Wordbreaker would go in front of Cedric. But uh, like Bronzak, Pistol, Wordbreaker teams with a Cedric on the team and one other option. Is probably one of the more popular options for him because it gold farms while killing pretty quickly. But um, Submerge on the enemy is always a really big liability with it. The absolute best it ever was was for about a week. When you could use Mechanist Hero Class, which had triple burning at the time, which it doesn't anymore, into half mana start, into Dispel. So you basically had Dispel that you could end up doing into triple skull damage. Uh, that didn't last that long. However, that was technically the strongest that team has ever been. But unfortunately, Mech got kind of shadow nerfed. Uh, the same time that Titan got buffed ages upon ages ago, which ended up making it the most powerful Hero Class in the game, uh, was the same time that um, uh, Mech indirectly got nerfed. And basically what they did is they made sure that the tree for every single class had the one related to their typing. So, of course, Mech getting the one that's more related to Mechs. Uh, Titan getting the one that actually had giant bonuses and all that, uh, which I believe was Elemental, which is one of the reasons why it became so good, because it gained Elemental on top of Stone, which is an insanely good combo, as we've found out over time, or pretty much immediately. But, um, yeah, I, I kind of wish pre-nerf... Um, it wasn't a, a deliberate nerf. But uh, I really wish pre-nerf uh, mech was a thing. Because mech was actually one of the better hero classes prior to that change. Theoretically, even better than Titan. Even though it didn't have Perpetual Barrier, only has Starting Barrier. It doesn't exist. It should. Make sure there's not an extra space or anything after it. It should definitely work. Oh, yeah. The code works only on PC mobile version. It does not work on the console versions, unfortunately. If you're trying to redeem it on there. But it only works on PC mobile. No consoles. Unfortunately. And that's likely to never change. Yeah, the code should be working. So what have you guys been doing while you've been quarantined? Or have some of you even been quarantined? <laughs> because I know some of you said you had to still work. What is the name of the controller you use for Gems of War that goes really quick? You can use any controller that PC supports. I specifically use a Joy-Con though. They're rather pricey though. If you're not going to be using them for Switch. Because they're specifically made for Nintendo Switch. However, um, they do have support on um, Steam. But I use a single Joy-Con. Not even two of them. This is a single one. They're pretty expensive though. Like a set of two costs like 60 bucks or something. And very rarely can you find a single one to buy. 
But yeah, it's this controller right here. Uh, I'm not using it right now, obviously. But um, this one. You can use anything, though. Like, anything that Steam supports will work. I just like using a Joy-Con, because for one, I already own it. But uh, for two, um, it's a one-handed controller. Um, one-handed controller works best because you need mouse for one hand. So you can't have two hands on your controller when you're using um, mouse, since that doesn't quite work. But uh, it's this controller right here. Uh, yeah, these little things. One of the main reasons why they're so uh, expensive is they actually have a bit of motion control and other things in them. They even have a um, infrared scanner and other things, which are used for other things on Switch. But obviously, it kind of inflates their um, cost a little bit. Just because it actually has so much functionality. But I just use it for an A input. <laughs> when I'm not using it for anything Switch related. And normally when playing Switch, I don't even use them because um, it's normally better just to use their Pro Controller unless the game specifically requires it, like Ring Fit Adventure or Mario Party or something, where it specifically uses like the, um, the infrared scanner or other aspects of the controller. But as you can see, you can easily fit it in one hand, which is one of the main reasons, and just use it as an A input. And they also have come with these little straps things. Which you just put around your wrist so that you can um, just easily um, have it there. So if you're typing or something, they don't like go away. Which ends up working out quite conveniently. It's almost like it was made to be used alongside with mouse and keyboard. Uh, let's see, we'll go for that for now. Well, so far, the United States is still arguing on what on earth they're going to do. But there is a possibility they're going to be doing a temporary universal basic income. And they better. <laughs> because, uh, I don't know what's really going to happen to the economy otherwise. Because a lot of people are making, like, zero right now. Oh, what do we go for here? We'll go for that. Oh, you played Gems of War all day long while watching in on the Animal Crossing stream? Nice. Yeah, quite a few people were uh, kind of just like listening in the background while chilling playing uh, Gems of War. Too bad that wasn't a gnome event. This would have been a perfect uh, weekend. Well, actually, I guess not because I wouldn't have been able to farm it much. But, you know, to people to like just chill watching the other thing because I would have been streaming it so much. But I guess it kind of is good that it wasn't a Vault event. Actually, speaking of that, when is the next Vault event, by the way? Why do I feel like it's next weekend? Uh, when is next PC, mobile, console Vault events? Uh, next Vault is on... The... Where is the next Vault? It looks like it's buried. Where'd it go? Is that really next Vault? Next Vault is until April 12th. Well, I guess it's kind of soon. Yeah, next Vault event is until April 12th. We still got a couple weeks. Actually, isn't that the uh, week weekend of Easter? When does Easter fall this year? I'm pretty sure that's the weekend of Easter. Uh, I looked this up earlier and I completely forget already. Easter 2020. Uh, yeah, it's quite literally the weekend of Easter. Nice. Right? Because it goes from the 10th to the 12th. Yep, it's the weekend of Easter. Is um, the time of um, the Vault event. The next Vault event. Wonder if they specifically planned it that way. They might have.
Am I going to go do Pure Faction next weekend on Animal Crossing? <laughs> Pure Faction on Animal Crossing. <laughs> oh, wait. Or Animal Crossing, you mean. Um. Oh, wait. I, I misread that for initially. Wait, is next... No, next Tuesday isn't, um... Next Tuesday isn't a thing. There is one I do need to go do Pure Faction for. But there's only one Pure Faction I have left. And that is specifically, um... Um, Sea of Sorrows. So I still have a couple weeks before we need to do a pure faction. Because next is Frostfire Keep. Then is, um, I check, I believe I forget what comes after Frostfire Keep. But I think there's like two, uh, at least like five more. Because then it goes to another one. Then it goes to whatever the most recent one was. Which was, um, I check, I even forget what the most recent one was actually. Oh, it was, uh, Lazarus is there. So, and then it goes back through the cycle, in which case it goes back to All Seeing Eye, then the Hall of Guardians, and then to um, Crypt, and then to Sea of Sorrows. So there's like six gap. There's like a six or seven kingdom gap before then. Oh, the weekend. My bad. I thought you were talking about Sea of Sorrows. Um, yeah, we'll still be doing Pure Faction next weekend. My bad. I thought you were talking about the uh, Sea of Sorrows, because that's the only one we don't have max. But yeah, of course we'll do Pure Faction next weekend. Uh, anyways, where were we? I'll probably try fitting it all in one day, though. <laughs> but we will still be doing it. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Let's go to... Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to level up Monk. Which is why I'm misfunctioning. Because that screen has nothing to do Monk on. No way to get to our kingdom to go farm. Okay, we'll go throw that over. But I really hope we start seeing more double storms coming into the game into the near future. I don't feel like the mechanic's going to be too useful. However, we have like nothing that uses the mechanic. Is that a month or a week apart? What do you mean by a month or a week? With what? I'm not sure what you're referring to with that question. That's 48 hour mega stream? No. However, I might do the entirety of um, faction from 20 to 500 in one stream. Which will be the first time I ever did that. that not on a Tuesday. I was going to say ever, but I forgot. I've done it like two or three times on Tuesday before. <laughs> I think we did it three times. Maybe four. We did a lot earlier this year. Like a lot, a lot. There was a, there was a, a part uh, earlier this year where I think, I think uh, four or five weeks in a row... We did a pure faction every single week. There's a lot of them. Yeah, most things rotate either every month or every six weeks as far as the events. Things that are weekend events like uh, Bounty Hunter, um, Vault events, the new invasion event that now occurs on a weekend. Those tend to cycle about every six weeks. But, um, Kingdom sends a cycle every about six months. And... I don't know. Everything kind of cycles differently. It depends what you're specifically wanting to figure out as far as what it cycles. But everything kind of is on a bit of a different cycle going throughout the game. But things like, um, that are consistent are like the Mythic every single first Friday of the month. The Guild War options, whatever four are currently available, will always cycle through. Uh, one after the other. The order in which we get um, the Tuesday Delves is always based on the um, next one in order of which they were released. The um, hero class for every single week event, now that we have every hero class in the game uh, soon, uh, as of next month, will be based on whatever the kingdom is. So if it's a Sword's Edge event, obviously we'll have the knight hero class and so on and so forth, corresponding to whatever the event is. And, like Things like those remain consistent. Throughout uh, various events. Uh, where can one see the schedule of all events? Uh, TerranceWorld.com. This link literally right here. Actually, let me go copy it. But I don't have a way to copy it over to chat. So let me go open uh, Chrome real quick. But yeah, this page right here. It's at TerranceWorld.com. 
Uh, where is Google? I mean, not Google. Where is Chrome, I mean? Okay, now where's my channel? Let's just type in Gems of War and we'll immediately find it. Gems of War. Uh, let's see. There we are. There's our live stream. Let's leave a like on our stream. Because why not? We're already here. Boom. And here you guys go. There's the um, link to the events. That should go right there. That link should work. I didn't test it before I did that. But there it is. Yeah. So that's all the upcoming events for um, that are going to be coming. But there you guys go. But yeah, just go to terranceworld.com if you want any kind of information like that early. Yeah, there's a lot of really good resources there. It's one of the best resource locations pretty much in the game now. Or external to the game, I mean. It didn't always used to be. But at this point, it is it increasingly became the best source for everything. Or for most everything. And it's updated regularly, of course. Yep, no problem, Chad. And if anyone else has any other questions, do let me know. And we'll make sure to go over it all. And we'll probably stream tonight until we get this final objective of uh, getting to level 88. So that means we'll only need 12 more levels then at that point, which should be doable by Guild War uh, popping back around. Actually, when does uh, the game say Guild War is going to happen again? Uh, 15 days. So even if we only do one per day, uh, we will still um, max before Guild Wars even starts. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this in Guild Wars. However, I want it as an option in case I do. Why does the Doom Scythe come around again? Uh, Doom Scythe, what kingdom is associated to? Whatever kingdom that is, is when it would come around. I do not recall off the top of my head what kingdom it's from. And then I'd be able to find that out. But the easiest way to check would be to find out where the uh, weapon is from. And then correspond it to the next time the event is coming. If it's even within visible sight. So we can see that Doom Scythe is from... So Doom Scythe is from... Golvania. So now we can go check when the next Golvania troop is coming into the game. So we go back to main menu. Which is terrensworld.com. We go to troops. We then uh, check for Golvania. Or if we really want to, just control find goal. And uh, if there's none, then we have a problem. Because that means Golvania is not happening anytime soon. And we can actually see how far it's not happening. We can see that we can currently see up to May 4th. Hey, that's my half birthday. <laughs> but um, my birthday is on November 4th, so that's like halfway through the year. But anyways, uh, we can see that there's no event up to May 4th. So we know for sure that you will not be able to get this weapon um, prior to um, May 11th. May 11th might be it. However, it could be even later than that. But as you can see, we have no Gulvania event within sight. And that's where the weapon comes from. So it could be a while. May 11th is the earliest possible time. And it's not even confirmed as when it could be. So you still have like a good two plus months, if not longer, until you'll be able to get Doom Scythe if you are looking for it. Uh, however, you might find it on occasional flash offer here. I believe they occasionally sell weapons you don't own for $5. I have yet to actually see one of those offers because I own every weapon in the game. I'm not sure how often they are. But it is possible that it shows up there. But assuming it doesn't show up there, uh, you have to wait all the way until the next Gulvania event. Which is at May 11th at the earliest and is most likely even later than that. Because we can see up to May 4th and it's not happening any time between then and May 4th. So, it could be a while. Though there are, are other Doom weapons that you could be using too, of course. Though, of course, if you specifically need that one, then that won't really help you. But uh, a lot of the Doom weapons are pretty good. The, the purple one is one of the more enticing ones too. I feel like overall best one is green of the six that are actually viable. Or, you know, the ones that create Doom Skulls and do full AoE. I personally feel like green's the absolute best. But all of them have their specific place depending on your team composition that you're trying to run. But anyways, let's keep going. Want to go get this level? Actually, how much more XP do we need? We need probably 20-something. Yep, exactly so. 26 more. Let's go grind it out. We're almost there.
Okay, what do we need here? Let's grab that down. Get our splits. And what else we need to get the explosion? Is there a black uh, market for cool stuff? For what? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no way to trade in Gems of War. So, no. And maybe someone's trying willing to max to sell you a maxed out account. I'm pretty sure some amount of people will do that. Though they don't tend to go for that much. Like the account I'm on right now would probably only go for like five hundred to a thousand. Even though the account has hundreds of uh, dollars spent into it and literal tens over ten thousand hours, it would probably only sell for under a thousand. Obviously, I would never sell it. One case just for the VIP level. <laughs> VIP levels actually do go to seven thousand nine hundred dollars in this game. Meaning, if you were to break even somehow, there are accounts that, if they could be sold for a one-to-one -one ratio relative to how much they spent, are worth over eight thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars just by the amount that they spent on the account. What do you need for VIP 5? It's $130. The most important two milestones is VIP 3 is $40, which is normally done with a single Death Knight pack. And uh, VIP 5 is $130, which can be done by any number of means. Uh, VIP key access isn't as useful as it used to be, though. It is still useful. Like, if you're planning on spending gems specifically to try to get a Mythic, it has the best overall rate of gem exchange relative to percent chance of getting a mythic. However, uh, if you're not using it for that purpose, there isn't, it isn't really that great of a value. You're like one foot in, one foot out. You're level what, 387 and not one mythic troop or weapon, except the basics. Uh, yeah, it can take a little while. Most of my accounts have been able to do it under level 100. However, I have heard people going upwards of level 1000, even 1100, and still getting zero mythics. I think it mainly has to do with the kind of guild that you're in. Because the amount of guild that you're in for a lot of early game determines a lot of your resource progression. And how easy some things will be going forward or how much longer they might take or qu uh, quicker it might take compared to others. Um, it can be a little bit hard early on in the game to get into a good guild. The best time to ever try to find yourself into a good guild, if you're not happy with your current one or just trying to find a better one in general, is during uh, right before a guild war week or the Monday of a guild war week. 
kind of like the Saturday, Sunday, and Monday around the Guild War time, uh, right before Guild War starts. Um, which uh, next Guild War starts in, what is that, 15 days. So you'd want to start looking into like 13 days or so. Um, but yeah, if you can get, um, that would be the best time to try to find a guild. And the main reason for that is that game mode, more so than any time, is the main time in which people are trying to recruit to fill out their guild to 30 members. Uh, even with 27 out of 30 for Guild Wars, people still generally like filling out to 30. And it's the time when uh, it's probably the easiest to get into some of the better guilds. Or even some of the more mid-range guilds that uh, just need more troops for Guild Wars. Or, you know, with people. Yeah, there you go. Maxwell didn't get his uh, first Mythic to level 1,100 plus. It can definitely happen. It's a, it depends on a lot of factors. You can just get really unlucky for a very long duration of time. It's definitely a factor that can occur. Well, hello, Motown. Welcome. And then there's people that get ultra lucky. <laughs> very, very ultra lucky. And then get kicked out of it after. Well, if you get to even claim the rewards once, it's kind of worth it. I don't know. Do guilds normally kick that quickly out of those? I haven't seen that. It would normally take multiple weeks before that would happen. And they would mostly only kick if you couldn't keep up with the requirements. Obviously, don't try getting into a massive guild if you can't keep up with the requirements. And also includes just having strong enough troops. Because some guilds you just might not have enough strong enough troops to actually get into. Just because some game modes can be really hard with weaker stuff. For example, Guild Wars. But also things like um, uh, any of the guild related events. That you might need to go really high on to meet a guild requirement of some kind. Like raids, evasions, all that. Well, I guess evasions isn't a weekly anymore. But uh, if anything, it's almost even harder now. And that's only a three day weekend thing. Hey, there's our level 88. I clicked through it so quickly, but uh, there we go. 88, 12 to go. Also, we're almost back at uh, 20,000 plus gems. We're getting there slowly. We took quite a bit of gem hits lately, but as long as we stay over 20,000, that's like my main goal for averaging out my uh, my resources there. Uh, but anyways, uh, does anyone else have any other questions? Otherwise, I'm probably going to be uh, wrapping up for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow, same time as always, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, an hour and a half prior to now tomorrow. And we'll be going over all the event week spoilers for next week and all that good stuff. Other than that, next Animal Crossing stream uh, will be in 6 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, and we'll be streaming pretty much all day because I am still addicted to that game. <laughs> and now, best time than ever to be doing it, so might as well. Um, but anyways, yeah, we'll be doing that, like, uh, absurd, addictive amount. <laughs> It'll be out of my system probably after a few weeks. But uh, for this entire month, expect a lot of it. <laughs> we'll still be doing all of our normal Gems of War stuff, though, obviously. Um, but we'll be doing absurd amounts of Animal Crossing. But anyways, guys, any other questions, anyone? Otherwise, I will see you all tomorrow night or tomorrow morning if you guys, or anytime tomorrow if you stop by the other stream. Not 5 a.m. Yeah, reset is at 5 a.m., but I want to get some amount of sleep. Because I'll probably be up for another hour or two, which means I'm not getting to bed until like 11 or so. And then, I don't know, it's only six hours. Kind of want a little bit longer than that. I did wake up at 5 today, uh, 5 a.m., but uh, I didn't start to stream till 6 because obviously I was kind of getting up, drinking some water, brushing teeth, shower, all that good stuff. Kind of just prepping. And obviously that isn't instantaneous. Should have probably grabbed breakfast too. I didn't actually eat breakfast this morning, nor did I, nor will I probably tomorrow. I don't know, I just can't really eat right when I wake up normally. This, my body just doesn't process it right. But, anyways, guys. I will catch you guys soon. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Stay safe out there. And I will catch you guys soon. Goodbye, everyone.